lot many millionaires in the retirees in the US these days, all thanks to stock markets. So I'll talk about that concept in the nugget section today and try and relate it to the Indian markets. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 29th August. Today there are only two stocks in the world. One is Reliance and the second is Nvidia. Reliance had its AGM on top of the merger that was announced yesterday with Disney. These are the three main listed Reliance stocks. Reliance was up 1.5%. It was actually up a lot more, but it went up steeply just before a big fall in the Nifty and Bank Nifty for the monthly expiry. And that took the Nifty and the markets by a storm. This was just about half an hour before the AGM began. The script perhaps got leaked out. Now there was a lot of action anticipated in Network 18. In the beginning part of the day only, it crossed 100. It went up to nearly 107 levels but then came down gradually closed at 99 levels this is the company under which the new jv or merger with disney is being formulated Reliance was not at all impacted two or three rupees up or down today the biggest move was from tata motors 4.4 percent had the disney merger been announced today then reliance would have crossed probably five percent the second big move came from bajaj fincer it has been down significantly in the last one year now tomorrow reliance i expect to be here the GDR is already showing 3% gap up for tomorrow. Oil and gas, banking, software, the other big players also, auto, food and tobacco, they were all concentrated near the bulls. The two sectors that were down most, metals and insurance. Insurance I'll talk about in the nugget section also. Today it was again down a lot, led by LIC. There is a GST notice on LIC. Government is now asking government to pay GST on time. Siemens, ABB are getting me worried now. This sector plus metal, cement, all of these need to go up if the economy has to kind of reach new levels. Nifty gave an impression around 12 that we are going through the roof, not correcting. But then Nifty consolidated, then came a big fall. This was a 5 minute candle, nearly a 160 point fall. After that Nifty got choppy and then in two candles, it went above the level from which it had come down. Then again a bit of choppiness. Bank Nifty was a similar graph, though it was not that violent. Good thing is Nifty is finding support at 25,000. It did not break 25,000 even once. Decisive closing above 2150 despite the huge fall. Nifty top 10 are all green, just minor cuts in ICICI Bank and Infosys. Reliance is up 1.6%, but Nifty went up just 0.15% because the broader markets were bleeding today. Even Bank Nifty, it actually did nothing. Nifty IT up today also, fourth consecutive day, half percent. Today, FI is bought a lot, 3,200 crores. DI is bought 2,700 crores. The net sell number for FIs have come down significantly. In last five days, they have bought for four days. DIs have crossed all limits this month, 51,000 crores bought in cash market. Nifty Energy was up 0.6%, next 50 down. This is the broader market I was talking about, not just Nifty, next 50 also. Defense was down 1.6%. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight about the FI data, let me zoom it a bit. Today's purchase and sales numbers were phenomenally high for FIIs. No day in the recent history has been as large, nearly twice the usual volumes in cash segment. I'll talk about it when we reach the graphs. Gold is up, Reliance GDR is looking good, Infosys and HDFC ADR also looking good, Bitcoin up 2%. Now the other important stock for the day, NVIDIA, despite good results and good forecast, is down 4%. This is perhaps on profit booking right now. The news does not seem to be bad at all. Do you notice Tata Motors here? It was actually here in the fear zone yesterday. The reason is it was up 4.4% today. The maximum contribution, of course, came from Reliance, the heavyweight, followed by Tata Motors, Bajaj Finance, ITC, HCL Tech, Bajaj Fincer, Bharti Airtel. HUL. Look at the top 25 stocks in terms of volumes today. Phenomenal volumes. 20 stocks down in Nifty, but in Nifty next 50, 32 down and 18 up. Today, Power Finance and REC got an upgrade. As a result, they were up most, along with IOC, up 1.7%. Phenomenal volumes for all the top stocks. I told you about Indigo yesterday. It was down a lot today. So was Adani Energy, Adani Green. Adani pack is in most fear zone. That is mostly because their PEs are astonishingly high. Look at this. Adani energy 832 P. Adani green 265 P. Adani gas or Adani total gas 135 P. 
some changes to the graph which i showed you yesterday the bottom part now reflects a 20 day graph yesterday i was talking about airtel up for five six days so i was not recalling exactly what was happening so the data shows that airtel has been up now for seven consecutive days if you look at nifty it has been up for 11 consecutive days now this is some bull run in progress right now also i thought that adding a dividend indicator would be good next two minutes this d will appear this is where the expiry siren sounded nearly every stock fell down at the same time coordinated move at the same instant and nifty fell as a result nearly everyone except reliance was down now what happened in this w perhaps was that fii's lightened a lot here this was the expiry part they sold off what they wanted to the stock prices fell suddenly and then they bought again they perhaps bought for the next series now profit booking done stock went down bought on the stock movement while going up as a result if you see several stocks regained their highs or actually went past them see tcs it went at levels more than from which it fell so that is what i was saying in the fia data that their buy was more than sell today bank nifty was choppy hdfc all over the place ICICI went up, then it came down, went up, came down. There is a third green entry now, Power Finance, not exactly a bank, and NBFC. Volumes were fantastic for the sector today. Some of the banks are showing really bad trends now. Bank of Broda, for example, down for five consecutive days. Kotak Mahindra down for five consecutive days. No bank has shown a big up move of late. Defense Pack was weak today also no respite for the sector grsc went up towards the end zen technologies hit a lower circuit volumes were high today and today like i have been saying cochin shipyard joined grsc in the red club in something many people are not sure whether they could sell yesterday and still get dividend so they didn't sell yesterday they chose to sell today this is a big problem with stocks like hindu sanjing they get beaten on two days most metal stocks went down when nifty cracked but then they recovered Oracle is out of the green zone in IT, nothing major to report in IT except high volumes. Now this sector will be interesting because Nvidia is down a lot. The overall Nasdaq is however not looking that bad. Depending upon the close of Nasdaq and tech stocks, this sector may move either way tomorrow. Power producers and distributors, no respite. Oil and gas was up a lot today. Volumes and interest continue to be high in this stock. Food and tobacco back came back today but no major gains. The top four players in the consumption pack are in green. Market bet was not good today, just like yesterday, only 14 sectors were up. Automobile today was led by Tata Motors, 4.5% up. Varun beverage is corrected today also. Chemical sector down, IRB corrected, construction engineering down a bit, cement down. Just like pharma, most of the healthcare providers are in the green zone. Tata Technologies corrected, 1.6%. Investment banking was in a bad shape today, nearly everyone was down. Just BSC up 1%, Pharma crack today, real estate mixed bag. Telecom had very high volume, especially in Bharti Airtel, Indus Tower and Vodafone. I bought Network 18 today for trading purpose only. I might sell it tomorrow or Monday, will not keep it for more than a day or two. The main reason is most of the benefit of the merger with Disney, it will actually go to Geo Cinema. Geo Cinema will get free content. It is not under Network 18. Most of Geo Cinema and many new age businesses they are owned by Ambani family, not even by RIL. RIL holds 10-15%, 20% in the new age businesses. This concept is probably going towards something like a Tata Sons philosophy now. I sold Cochin Shipyard in the morning, but then it fell a lot. There was some gains on the table, so I bought it. Think of the Yahoo Finance article in the description. It is a good article. Now, just like we have PF and PPF, US has 401k, which is the PF part, and IRA, which is the PPF part. These are a lot more flexible in the US than India, and a significant amount of people who enroll for these plans, they invest in the stock market. These are the pre-pandemic levels, about 1,90,000 millionaires in both the plans. Suddenly, the 401k has shot through the roof. This was down here when the markets in US fell a lot. The IRA numbers are not that high for a simple reason that IRA has very stiff limits while there are flexibilities on what amount you want to put in 401k. For example, you can increase your contribution with your employer and hence add more every month to the stock markets. So the millionaires here are close to 5 lakh. 
or half million millionaires. IRA is 0.4 million millionaires. So US market is producing a lot of millionaires in terms of retirement planning just because stock markets are very high and they have given very good gains. India, we say that we are the best performing market in the world. There is no such data getting published in India, however. Our investments are going into say LIC, SBI because of mutual funds, HDFC. They are buying into companies which are probably loss making or very long ahead. The Adani Pack and a lot of other companies where you would want to question why are you investing my money here and not in the top performing company. But those questions cannot be asked. So we are happy with gains like 10%, 12%. If you are in PF, PPF, we get around 8%. Maybe tax free, that's okay. Now we say these numbers are safe. 41,000 crores are in Adani Pack. Here I'm not saying Adani Pack is bad. This much mutual funds have exposure in Adani Group. Where is the safety? Now here is a small simulation. There are four boxes here. The first box is 5 to 15%. These are post-tax and post-inflation returns. At the top is equity, including mutual fund and ETF, all formats actually. Then gold and silver, they are slightly unpredictable, but in the long run, they give good returns. If you are investing into bonds, PF, PPF, which are tax-free, then you would get 1 to 5%. Now PF, PPF are higher than 5%, but I have adjusted to inflation here. Instruments like FD, ULIP, Saving Bank, they are negative returns. Now there are certain unpredictable ones also, real estate, if you ask a Bangalore person, it is above the green, probably 30-40% return per year. But that is not a sustainable model in the long run. Crypto, some people have lost their shirt. Some people have made enormous amount of money. ESOPs, they may make a lot of money for you. Some people retire in the 20s only. Some people, despite working for a startup for 10, 15, 20 years, in the end are very unhappy. Now a small simulation. Let me remove this. You can take a screenshot of this. Now this may not be all the instruments. You may have other instruments also. Think about where your money is, how much percentage. For example, you might have say 20% in bonds, PF, PPF. You might have say 40% in FDs. You might have 20% in equity. Maybe a house which is worth 20% of your net worth in real estate. This visualization of your investments is very important. Most people don't do it because they are scared to face the reality. Do face the reality, then only you might be able to think of some alternate action or a corrective action. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.